heavy armor. Tanks, fast, powerful, lethal. They are the armored fist of coalition forces. Modern tanks provide incredible direct fire support to infantry in battle. They have proven to be an invaluable tool in the arsenal of any military. The intensity of recent conflicts in Central Asia and the Middle East have proven that tanks provide protection that can't be matched by more lightly armored vehicles. Advanced tanks such as the American Abrams M1 and German Leopard II are the answers to high-intensity ground conflicts. Heavy armor, the steel fist of battle. of the modern tank. After years of being bogged down in trench warfare, the British looked to technology, wanting a means of effectively breaching German lines. The Mark series of tanks were first seen in battle in 1916. The rhomboid-designed hull allowed it to easily cross trenches and obstacles. They were slow, cumbersome, and had a nasty habit of incinerating their crews when hit by artillery or mortar fire. After several years and numerous engineering improvements, the Mark V version was significantly better than its predecessors. During the Battle of Amiens in 1918, this tank truly showed its capabilities. With supporting Australian and Canadian infantry, the tanks helped penetrate German lines over seven miles in one day, farther than any battle before. By the time of World War II, the mechanized combined arms force had come of age, but initially only for the Germans. They had learned from the lessons of the First World War. They truly understood the full combat potential of tanks Supported by mechanized infantry and specialized tactical attack aircraft, it became known as Blitzkrieg or Lightning War. These combined tactics were to forever change modern land combat. During the Second World War, tank engineering dramatically evolved. From tough and often brutal frontline combat experience, designers realized the tanks needed to be faster more reliable, heavily armored, and absolutely lethal. By the end of the war, tanks had truly proven their worth in battle. In conflicts during the last half of the 20th century, in places such as Korea and Vietnam, tanks were only of limited use. Virtually impassable mountains and jungles made the tactical use of armor almost impossible. But one place tanks had tactical importance was during the Cold War buildup in Europe. In fact, it was the Cold War that was the catalyst for the development of today's modern armor. 
In order to effectively confront the massive numbers of tanks the Soviet military could field, Western armies decided to invest in technology. Technology led gradually to the concept of the main battle tank. Two of the best came from the United States and Germany, the Abrams M1 and Leopard A1. They both featured refinements in targeting and ranging, gun stabilization, communications, crew comfort, and protection. Their weapon systems were second to none. The design principle was simple. Destroy Soviet armor through superior firepower and armor protection. Fierce combat in the first Gulf War proved Western tanks, especially the Abrams M1 and Leopard A1, were total killing machines. Virtually invincible to direct fire, they easily tore apart enemy tanks. Skeptics became believers. Tanks, once again, ruled supreme. Well, many people believe that their, their day is gone, but um, as we're seeing in recent experiences in Iraq, they're still a very useful tool, and it's, it's a, a piece of equipment that most nations have got to keep to be able to have an effective army and fighting force. They're still a very effective um, weapon on the battlefield, have a huge effect on the enemy, both psychologically and as well if we need to fire, obviously in a physical sense as well. The key to modern tanks' incredible success was technology and what they brought to land combat, capabilities beyond compare. Tanks are a blend of firepower, mobility, and protection. And if you look at a tank from, from those three perspectives, it is probably the best piece of equipment on the battlefield from that perspective. It provides you with a direct fire platform that is able to engage whatever it is you find out there, be it lightly uh, armored vehicles all the way up to an enemy tank if you're dealing with that. It has the protection to deal with uh, the IED threat or the RPG threat, and it also has the mobility to get to a location fairly quickly, deal with the threat, and then get out of there. But tanks and technology are nothing without superior crew training. Training that can literally mean the difference between life and death in combat. The Abram M1 tank. Weight, 67 tons. Crew, four. Armor, Chopham Composite Armor Plate. Primary armament, 120 millimeter M256 smoothbore cannon. Secondary armament, 150 caliber M2 HB heavy machine gun. Two M240 7.62 millimeter coaxial machine guns. Engine, Honeywell AGT 1500C multi-fuel turbine engine, capable of 1500 horsepower. The latest version is the M1A2. It features improved commander's display unit, forward-looking infrared, thermal biocular image unit, gunner's primary sight, CITV electronic unit. All these features help tank commanders quickly identify and prioritize targets. The M1 strikes fear in the hearts of the enemy because of the capabilities it brings due to the professionals that operate it and the speed, the firepower, and the pure, again, intimidation that it brings to the battlefield. It just scares the living crap out of the enemy. If you drive a tank over a ridge line, all of a sudden the enemy sees M1 tank, he's going to want to turn around and run, at least if he's a smart enemy. 
The German Leopard 2 is the latest version of this very popular and lethal tank. Countries around the world have bought it for their armors, including Australia and Canada. German Leopard 2A6 tank, weight 62 tons, crew four, armor third generation composite composed of steel, tungsten, and ceramics. Primary armament, 120 millimeter L55 smooth bore cannon. Secondary armament, two MG 3A1 7.62 millimeter coaxial machine guns. Engine, MTU 12 cylinder diesel, capable of 1500 horsepower. Leopard tanks are extremely important. It's not so much that you need a, the, the Leopard tank. I think you need a tank on a battlefield for a variety of reasons. Um, if you look at the current conflict that we're in, tanks are extremely important because of the presence that they bring to a battlefield, the psychological edge, if you will, they bring. It's that psychological edge that can make all the difference in battle. Today's modern tanks have that and more. First of all, they bring firepower. And unless you are on the ground, uh, if you've never had a 60 or 70 ton main battle tank rumble by you, you don't understand how intimidating that, that weapon platform is. And of course, you never want to be on the receiving end of either Bradley or uh, Abrams, because that would mean that you're sitting in a, a vehicle and about three kilometers away, somebody has you in their sights or has the vehicle to your right or left in your sights. The first time you know that you're in harm's way is when the vehicle to your right or left explodes in a fireball. That's uh, not a good place to be. So th they bring tremendous capabilities. The other uh, advantage is it provides protection to the, uh, the soldiers. If we couple that with good tactics, the casualty rates in our current uh, conflicts are historically the lowest they've ever been. And part of that is because of the equipment we have is the best that the uh, money can buy and uh, American ingenuity can, can produce. Modern tanks instill fear in the enemy, but they also give comfort to coalition infantry. For our own infantry, it, um, it gives them a warm feeling of that they've got something there that can protect them, that's got very efficient firepower that is able to shoot at distance as well as accurately. Um, and also is able to go in front of them and provide the support that they need, really, in the operations that they're doing. And because of the psychological effect it has on an enemy, you know, it just works really well. If you look at a main battle tank on a battlefield, it's a huge honking piece of kit, okay? Bigger than just about anything else out there. Plus it mounts a huge gun, a 120, or in the case of the Leopard ones that we initially used, a 105. And in both cases, the firepower that it brings is intimidating to anybody who goes up against it. Plus, if you look at the mobility and the protection that it provides, uh, it's not something you want to take on on the modern battlefield. If you're an insurgent, it's much easier to go up against a lightly armored vehicle than it is to go up and try and take out a tank. From that perspective, a tank is an extremely valuable piece of kit. Fort Knox, Kentucky, current home of the U.S. Army Armor Center. This is where tank crews are trained, trained to win in battle. Major Tim Groves is in charge of training a new group of junior officers. Some of these officers will soon see combat. Currently, uh, today, we have armored second lieutenants who will be out shooting their first uh, tank gunnery. These lieutenants have been trained for the past two weeks on how to move, shoot, and communicate within a tank and act as a member, be a member of a tank crew. Uh, today will be their first time ever firing uh, live 120-millimeter rounds downrange. So it's a hell of an experience for these guys today. Uh, as they build into their career, they'll soon be tank platoon leaders in charge of not just their tank, but three other tanks underneath them. Day and night, 
the junior officers train, learning the commands using the thermal sights, firing the weapon systems. It's exhausting work, but it still has a special appeal. The appeal of being a, a tank commander, being on a tank, being a member of a tank platoon is first of all, you're on 70 tons. What else would you want to face the enemy with? I mean, you can face the enemy on foot with just body armor, or do you want to go in on a tank with 70 tons of steel around you to protect you, and a 120 millimeter main gun weapon, along with your 50 caliber weapon and several other 7.62 machine guns. The amount of firepower that you bring to the battlefield is just absolutely incredible. Uh, plus, you're out riding around all day. The system here, the M1 series tank, it's like riding on a Cadillac. It's a great system, great tank to be on. Today's modern tanks are all about offensive and defensive power. But they have an Achilles heel, a weakness that can kill. Modern tanks are protected by sophisticated armor systems. This protection is the best, but it's not enough. There are still threats that will kill. Kill even the best protected tanks. The threat is not necessarily another tank. There are other, far deadlier threats. Hunter-killer teams armed with anti-tank weapons, IEDs, tank destroyers, artillery. If you're looking at the current fight, then what you're dealing with is the IED threat, the improvised explosive device threat, uh, anything from stacked anti-tank mines to improvised explosives on the side of the battlefield. Uh, that's predominantly your, your main threat, but you've also got the RPG threat, uh, rocket-propelled grenades, and just about anything else that people want to try and throw at it. By far the most lethal anti-tank weapon system is aircraft. Just as in World War II, aircraft are the number one danger to tanks. Today, there are purpose-built aircraft whose sole role is tank killing. Probably the best, the A-10 Thunderbolt. Considered the deadliest anti-tank aircraft in the world, its 30 millimeter cannon and Maverick missiles can easily destroy any modern tank. A-10 Thunderbolt, nickname Warthog, crew one, engine two General Electric TF-34 turbofans, maximum speed 380 knots, armament 30 millimeter cannon, two AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, eight AGM-65 Maverick missiles. In order to protect themselves from aircraft, tanks work in tandem with anti-aircraft resources. As well, they practice shooting down targets, such as helicopters. So how do tanks kill other tanks? It's the rounds fired from the 120 millimeter gun that does all the destructive work. The primary tank killing round fired by coalition armor is the 120 millimeter armor piercing, fin stabilized, discarding Sabo tracer. The Sabo round is much like an arrow, only this arrow is made of tungsten or depleted uranium. As the round is fired, the Sabo, known as the shoe, falls off, and the fin-stabilized penetrator rod flies towards the target at over 3,500 miles per hour. The penetrator focuses its full force into a very small area, plowing straight through heavy armor. As the penetrator enters the tank, heated fragments of metal fly off in all directions, hitting anybody and anything inside. This is our M865 PIP training round, Sabo. Everything in the blue are called Sabo pedals. That's what keeps the main penetrator centered in the gun tube. After 400 meters, those fly off, and the penetrator continues to go down towards the target. 
So what type of soldier wants to be a tanker? What does it take? I would say that your, your, your modern armored soldier is extremely proficient in terms of technology, dealing with new technologies that are being thrown at them. The Leopard tanks are an extremely technologically advanced tank. Uh, it takes a soldier with a high degree of intelligence with highly educated to be able to deal with that. Uh, plus there's the aspects of uh, the teamwork that is required. Working together to maintain the uh, 60 some odd ton vehicle, uh, that's a lot of work. And you have to have a motivated uh, person who's uh, part of your team in order to accomplish that successfully. Today's modern tanks showcase the best of technology. Mobile, fast, lethal. Coalition tanks are incredible assets on any battlefield. Well, the technology on the tanks nowadays is uh, very, very good, very modern. The, the guns are stabilized, so we're able to fire on the move. Whereas back in the Second World War, they were effectively just a cannon in an armored vehicle. Because you can fire on the move, because you can fire accurately at extended ranges, the armored vehicle nowadays has moved on tremendously. And the mobility of that vehicle is just far beyond anything that was ever out there before. M1 Series tank, the most incredible vehicle uh, out there to ride on and be in battle with. So you're with soldiers every day and you're building a team around the most incredible uh, people in the world, United States Army soldiers, a member of the greatest team in the world. Tanks are still effective and I'll use the way they're designed as an example of why they're so effective nowadays and they, they're designed using firepower protection and mobility in mind. And if a tank's designed with all those three things put together very well, then it's such an effective fighting machine will turn. It's going to do its job wherever you put it in whichever condition. Heavy armor, the steel fist of battle. 